A new day finds me easing under the Snake Creek Bridge. Snake Creek separates Windley Key from Plantation Key in Upper Isla Mirada near Mount Marker 86. I pick up speed heading out of Snake Creek to the site of our next shipwreck, the Chavez. Number six on the old chart. She was nicknamed after her owner and captain, Don Antonio de Chavez. Her proper name was Nuestra Senora del Carmen, San Antonio de Padua y las Animas, or Our Lady of the Carmen, St. Anthony of Padua, and the Saints. The Chavez was an Italian-built ship. She was a 221-ton merchant nao and a consort to our next shipwreck, the Herrera. Her crew and passengers were saved. The Chavez is located 500 yards, 208 degrees from the Snake Creek head pin in a nine foot deep sand pocket surrounded by turtle grass. She was rediscovered in 1960 by the Roberts brothers. One of the closest wreck sites to shore, she was well salvaged by the Spanish following the disaster. The Chavez carried pewter ware, julep, vanilla, Mexican ceramics, wooden tubs and crates, jars of bomb and Chinese paving stones. There was no registered treasure on her manifest. Her gravesite is now home to a variety of fish, including grunts, juvenile angelfish, tangs, and triggerfish. Visibility here is generally limited due to the shallow depth and proximity to the shore. Here is one of her cannon displayed at Whale Harbor Inn on Upper Matacumbi Key near Whale Harbor Channel. The Chavez is an easy sight to find, especially for first time galleon hunters. The next site on the old chart, number seven, La Balandra que va a la Florida, was a situado or supply ship bound for St. Augustine. After the disaster, the Spanish set up a real, or salvage camp, near Whale Harbor Channel. The supplies and wood from this shipwreck gave sustenance and protection to the many survivors of the doomed armada. She was later refloated and repaired to assist the two-year Spanish salvage effort. I'm heading to the next wreck site, the Herrera. Number eight on the old chart, the Herrera is about two and a half miles from the Chavez. This wreck is nicknamed after her owner and captain, Don Luis de Herrera. Her proper name is Nuestra Senora de Belém y San Antonio de Padua. The Herrera is located approximately two miles, 175 degrees southeast of the Whale Harbor Channel head pin. I'll locate her in a sand pocket completely surrounded by turtle and manatee grass on the seaward side of Hawk Channel with a water depth of 18 feet. The Herrera was an English built 264 and a half ton merchant Nao. Her manifest listed 12,000 pesos in silver specie and bullion, 359 marcos in silver ingots, animal hides, king size porcelain, and ceramic bowls and jugs. The Herrera was nicknamed the figurine wreck by modern salvers because of the hundreds of small carved figures of Mayan origin found on the site. Today, her anchor, a few cannon, and some chain may be found in front of the Whale Harbor Inn. These 
these amazingly well-preserved shoe insoles were recovered from deep within the Herrera's ballast. I'm approaching the wreck site now. There she is. Since the Herrera is in the only sand pocket in a grassy area, she is another easy wreck to find. Visibility is usually good here, since the wreck is several miles from shore. Today I have over 60 feet of visibility. A large school of gray grunts patrol the scattered ballast. This beautiful anemone is home to a small school of juvenile tomtate. Several juvenile drums flit through the ballast mound. A piece of metal refuse houses several interesting occupants, including numerous baby lobster. This anemone coexists with the lobster and several peppermint shrimp. The Herrera is a wonderful dive site. She was relocated in 1961 by the Roberts brothers during an aerial search. The Herrera was worked initially by Buddy Crane, Doc Wellberry, Marty Maylock, and Don Thomas. The next site on the old chart is number nine, Nuestra Senora de Belém y San Juan Batista. She was nicknamed the Trace Puentes, or the Three Decks. Florida wreck site 8MO177, the Trace is located close to one mile, 130 degrees southeast of the Herrera. She was rediscovered in 1963 by Don Gorgiolo, Art Sapp, Marty Maylock, and Don Thomas during an aerial search midway between Alligator and Crocker Reefs. The trace displaced 212 tons and carried sugar, chocolate, vanilla, indigo, ceramics, and animal hides. She was captained by Don Diego de la Corte. A couple of years ago, I met a guy in an Isla Morada honky-tonk that claimed to have found this golden goose 15 years ago in the general vicinity of the trace. This goose has over four ounces of gold in its tail. This 962 ounce contraband silver bar was found near the goose. There are no markings to indicate payment of the king's 20% tax. For the next wreck site, I'm going south on the overseas highway through Isla Morada to the lower tip of Upper Matacumbi Key. I'm heading out of Tea Table Key Channel with my friend Doug Bontrager of Fort Lauderdale. Next on the old chart, number 10, Nuestra Senora del Rosario y Santo Domingo was nicknamed Merguia, the last name of the owner. This ship was refloated shortly after the hurricane. The next target is number 11, San Pedro, which means St. Peter in Spanish. San Pedro is the first of six wreck sites located in a 14-mile stretch that I call Galleon Alley. All of the shipwrecks in Galleon Alley are supported by a hard pan bottom, unlike some of the wrecks we visited earlier that are sinking deeper and deeper into the sand. San Pedro was a Dutch-built 287-ton merchant nao. She was owned by Don Gaspar de la Rera Berdugo and captained by Don Gaspar Lopez de Gonzalez. Her cargo included thousands of one real cob coins dated from 1731 to 1733. She carried 16,000 pesos in silver specie and bullion, along with a cargo of sugar, indigo, hides, vanilla, cocoa, tobacco, and Chinese King Tsai Dynasty porcelain, similar to this beautiful piece. This jar and many other fine shipwreck artifacts are on display at the Museum of Florida History in Tallahassee.
Well salvaged by the Spanish in 1734, San Pedro was rediscovered by Art McKee in the early 1950s. This vintage footage was shot on her ballast less than two weeks after Art located her remains. San Pedro lies one and a quarter miles, almost due south of the dock on Indian Key. She's in a sand pocket surrounded by turtle grass in 18 feet of water on the inside edge of Hawk Channel. San Pedro Rec Site is a state underwater archeological preserve with mooring buoys to accommodate six dive boats. Renowned treasure salvers Captain Bob Klein and Keith Johnson recovered thousands of silver one real cob coins seaward of the ballast in 1962. They also recovered a gigantic clump of silver half real cob coins as well. All of these coins were recovered in the sand pockets underneath small fissures in the hard pan bottom. San Pedro Underwater Archaeological Preserve was dedicated in April of 1989. This 700-pound limestone plaque near the stern or seaward portion of the ballast identifies this wreck. Seven concrete replicas of Spanish cannon have been placed around the ballast to add authenticity to the site. An anchor of unknown origin, probably from the early 1800s, marks the shoreward end of the ballast, or the bow of the ship. San Pedro site offers a great variety of small aquatic life, including silversides, herring, and tomtates. A beautiful spotted moray eel greets me at the entrance to his lair. This large black grouper eyes me suspiciously before departing amid a school of blue stripe grunt and several pork fish. San Pedro Underwater Archaeological Preserve is an ideal site for underwater photography.